Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM Defect Steady Model for today's second video. This is your European Outlook for the next 30 days slash for two days or six weeks. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video is say was our 6 a.m. upload. I've got a 10 to 14 day that will include all our regular features coming up for you later on this afternoon as well. So please like, share, subscribe on videos. Thank you so much everybody. Uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly then uh, for the UK and for Europe as well. It's going to take us from the 24th to the 31st of January. So uh, the coming week will once again, or this week I suppose, will once again be dominated by high pressure sitting across the west of Europe and in some central parts of Europe as well. We've got trough low pressure up to the north across Scandinavia and that trough of low will be bringing colder air down into the eastern side of Europe. Meanwhile though, out west, this ridge will keep much of western Europe mainly dry. 500 millibar height, Tommy shows this up very nicely. Again, the ridge of above average heights, high pressure in the Atlantic with a trough of low pressure to the north and also extending down the east side of the country and the jet stream doing something a little bit like that. So it does look so sort of northeastern and eastern Europe as well. Winter is going to be in the week ahead. So this is how the temperature anomaly is uh, looking. Generally, uh, warm and average across much of northern uh, Europe. So from Ireland and the UK in the west, all the way over to like the Baltic Sea and uh, northwestern parts of Russia in the far east, above our temperature. There. And particularly, of course, focus on Scandinavia, especially southern Scandinavia, so Denmark, uh, Norway, Sweden, uh, significantly above average temperatures through here, then over Baltic Sea into Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, uh, and also Finland. We see that those um, those uh, nations are uh, warmer than average too. So a little bit cooler through France and into northern parts of Spain and Portugal. Reason being the ridge of high pressure, you know, uh, with with frost and whatnot going on. Southern Spain is a little bit warmer. Uh, the central bowl of the Med, uh, not too far from average really, but it's in the east of the southeast Europe. But we've got the cold temperature, so from southern Italy, maybe Adriatic through the Balkans. And then especially so down into the far southeast, of course, south of the Black Sea, really, Romania, and into Turkey, Greece. Um, those areas looking really, really cold, actually, in uh, the week ahead. We've seen reports of snow, you know, uh, all the way into, like, the Greek islands and whatnot over the past few days. And that goes on through this uh, coming week. Precipitation-wise, we look like that's so a little bit wet average in the extreme northwest of Europe and also here in the uh, northeast. Uh, then generally, many central western areas are drier than average, uh, significantly so, uh, you know, through France and into Ireland and the UK and many parts of Spain and Portugal as well. Most of the Med looks pretty dry too, the central bowl of the Med looking very dry and into the eastern part of Europe from the Adriatic to the Black Sea, most areas are drier than normal. It does get a bit wetter though when we come down into the eastern portion of the Mediterranean, so that will be heavy rain. Some of it could be snow uh, as well with that, as we said. Um, there will, there has been snow, you know, all the way onto the Greek islands, and, uh, and that can be expected to continue over the next few days. Right, week two will be the 31st of January to the 7th of February. No real changes, uh, really, still with this area of high pressure from the Atlantic into the western part of Europe. Still lots of low pressure across northern, eastern and northeastern regions. And of course, the ridge does extend, extend down into the central and western bowl of the Mediterranean. The 500 millibar height anomaly looking uh, like that with the above average heights again through much of Western Europe below average heights in the north and in the east of Europe as well. And the jet stream and wind flow is something a little bit like that. So it's still also winter will be over in the eastern, southeastern part of Europe during this week. Uh, temperature anomaly is look like that. So again, uh, uh, going to be another mild week through most parts of uh, western, northwest Europe anyway. Ireland, UK, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, into Denmark, southern Norway, uh, milder than average you here. Many parts of um, France, Spain and Portugal looking uh, warmer than average too. Again, the colder than average temperature anomaly is uh, once more in this eastern, southeastern part of Europe. So again, it's around 
the uh, around the Balkans and through some parts of Italy into Greece and Turkey. It is a little bit cooler across uh, Scandinavia and northeastern Europe in this week. So uh, it's a little bit colder up there. But basically the idea is northern Eastern Europe cold, western, southwestern Europe uh, generally mild. And precipitation-wise, uh, looking like that. So uh, once more, the west... Looking generally dry uh, uh, through through the UK, through Ireland, through France, Spain, Portugal, most parts of Mediterranean to Italy anyway, uh, looking uh, drier than normal. The eastern portion of the Med, so that's Greece, Turkey, uh, again above average rainfall there with cold average temperatures. We can expect not only rain but also risk of some snow places as well. And then on this uh, far eastern side of Europe there, we see that it is a little bit wetter than average as well. Scandinavia perhaps going uh, slightly towards the drier side, if anything. Right, uh, so that's that done. Okay, let's go through the week three then. It's going to be the 7th to the 14th of February. Um, no changes. High pressure is still reaching in from the Atlantic into much of Europe. It is, ex it really is extending uh, eastwards as well, uh, so now the region is beginning to push in towards eastern parts of as well, low pressure being pushed right out towards Greenland and Iceland, uh, really. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that, again with the above average heights extending from the Atlantic into Western Europe, lots of low pressure continuing around Greenland and Iceland. The cold trough is being moved over towards eastern parts of uh, Europe. This cold trough of low pressure being moved over towards the eastern part of uh, Europe. Uh, right, temperature anomalies, look like that. So, northwest southeast split, divided on average across the northwest of Europe from uh, Spain and Portugal all the way up to northern Scandinavia and all points in between have above average temperatures, but cold and average temperature in the southeastern corner of Europe once more. So, around the Black Sea, towards Turkey, particularly into Turkey, actually. Uh, uh, and then down towards Greece as well, southern Italy. You know, uh, those areas continue to look very cold as we go into week three. In between, there's this white area where there's no signal. So there, I suppose, you've got like 50-50 chance of either being milder or, or maybe colder. And then precipitation-wise, we look like that for week three. Most areas are drier than normal now, to be honest. So uh, all the way from Portugal and Spain and also France, across Western Europe, right the way over towards the Black Sea and southern Italy. It's more or less drier than average in most areas. Most parts of the Med looking dry as well. Just this far north, northwestern part of Europe looking a little bit wetter through there. More influence from the Atlantic. So probably going a bit more unsettled for Scotland, for example. And more particularly so, though, uh, in, in towards Norway and, and uh, parts of Sweden, perhaps. Right, week four is going to be the 14th to the 21st of February. And is there any changes? No, there isn't. So once again, we have the high pressure uh, here across most parts of Europe. A large ridge just going nowhere fast. All of the low pressure still up here across Greenland and Iceland. 500 millibar height anomaly shows no change. Again, the above average heights covering most parts of uh, Central Western Europe, lower pressure is out here. The jet stream is pushed up there as well. The temperature anomaly looks like that. The warmer than average area is expanding out. So most parts of Europe now looking milder than average with cold and average temperatures being forced right way over to the extreme eastern, southeastern part of Europe. Um, but yeah, generally getting a little bit warm across many parts of Europe, particularly so for northern and western areas. So that's where the warmest, you know, weather um, uh, continues. And most parts of uh, northern Europe looking a little bit wetter than average, like through Scotland into Scandinavia. Uh, again, maybe some northeastern parts of Europe. But the, the bulk of Europe, most areas are drier than normal, of course, under that large ridge of high pressure. So a notably dry and warm February coming up, if this is right, particularly in the west of Europe, colder in the east. Right, that's the 30 day look ahead done. Let's just go through weeks five and six data before we go. So this is the week five uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly 
21st of February to the 28th. Uh, it looks like that. Still flat as a pancake. Still up high pressure in off the Atlantic into most parts of Europe. Lower pressure is that pier winds remaining in from a westerly direction. The 500 millibar height anomaly uh, continues to look like this. So again, we see this ridge extending in from the Atlantic. All the below pressure is up here. That is where it will be more unsettled. The temperature anomaly, again, looks generally warm across most parts of uh, Europe, all the way from like northwestern Russia down to Spain and Portugal, all points in between above average. This extreme southeastern corner, Greece, Turkey, uh, towards the Black Sea, uh, that is where it is colder still. And the uh, precipitation anomaly, a bit of a north south split, so it's still a bit wetter in the north, generally drier. In the south, I think most areas are still pretty dry under that ridge. And then finally, week six will be the 28th of uh, February to the 7th of March. It looks like that. New month, new season, but no change in the weather. The high pressure continues to just sit there across the west of Europe. And the low pressure remains around Greenland and Iceland. Will this pattern ever change? It's been going on since the end of August. Uh, and there it is, into the beginning of March, and the pattern is still broadly the same as what we had at the end of August. Unbelievable how long this pattern has gone on for, to be honest. Again, the 500 millibar height anomaly still with that ridge up here, still with below around there. The uh, temperature anomaly is still above average in most areas. Um, and lastly, precipitation anomalies look like that. Um, and yeah, it's like driving out still across most parts of Europe, especially west and south, west is a bit wetter, up to the north. That ridge just will not go, will it? Just will, just can't get rid of it. Uh, one incredible, I mean, in a way this is extraordinarily tedious and boring and, you know, all of those things, you know, because it's such a, uh, irritating ongoing pattern that just can't shake off. In another way, though, this is absolutely extraordinary and, you know, it's unbelievable how long this pattern has been going on for. Um, with the exception of October, which did deviate a little bit and turned a bit more unsettled in October. But overall, this pattern has been going on since, like, the second half of uh, August, so around week three of August. It's the pattern that gave us a hot September. As I say, it did relent a little bit in October, gave us that wetter month. Then we brought the pattern back again in uh, in November, uh, albeit the last week did get that brief northerly blast um into west of europe but yeah yeah it's been a little bit on off but generally this pattern has been in since late august if this is right it's still going strong even into early march this is more than six months of a uh, continuous repeating pattern it's exceptional it's extraordinary at some point the pattern will change when that happens and what it changes to remains to be seen maybe in the end this high pressure will go to greenland just in time for summer, and that is when the pattern will break and will go into a deluge. I, you know, hopefully not, but at some point this pattern will have to shift. It can't keep going on indefinitely, and uh, I suspect when the shift happens, it will probably be to cooler and wetter. Um, so we'll see, though. Certainly up to the beginning of March, however, this pattern is still going strong. So it's an extraordinarily long-lasting uh, and uh, really quite unbelievable repeating uh, blocking pattern. Albeit it's a mid-latitude block rather than a northern block. Of course, if this high pressure had been like a northern blocking feature going on all of this time over the northern latitude, then it would have been really cold. But um, but it's been sort of centred over the west of Europe and in the Atlantic. Anyway, that's your, I'm off on a tangent. I'm so sorry, everybody. Anyway, uh, that is your EC 30-day uh, look ahead done. And does it work for the UK and Europe as well? Uh, we'll do it all over again uh, next Tuesday. We will look at this model again on Friday just with a, or Saturday morning just with a focus on the UK and on Ireland as well. We're going to be back shortly with a 10 to 14 day. It's going to include all of the regular features, so come back for that then. But for this week's EC 30-day look ahead, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.